This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The excitement level in the NBA and Stanley Cup playoffs continues to rise. Some fun overtime action last night. We've got three games coming tonight across the NBA and the NHL. We're going to have Tom Vecchio on today to break down all three of those games. Talk about the futures market, too, in the NBA, given the strangeness going on in Nuggets versus Wolves. And then get his thoughts on tonight's two NHL games as well. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. You can find his work here on covering the spread both today and tomorrow. Well, because we're now Tom back on for more NBA NHL thoughts and also on the solo shot on the FanDuel Research podcast feed every Monday and Tuesday. Tom, surprised you're here, honestly. Uh, You had Ryan Jeffers as a dinger call for dinger Tuesday, which he went deep. And then your Rangers walk it off in overtime with the victory. So frankly, why are you here? That's my big question. Uh, I'm here because I want to continue to bring more good picks, but I am doing fantastic. Last night was obviously a very stressful game. Did not expect the Rangers to come out with that. They you know, got beat in a lot of areas, but they come out with a win. Uh, the Jeffers home run call was great. Uh, we have a loaded slate today. There's a lot of day baseball as well. Uh, my fantasy team is looking great. I'm ready to roll. Yeah, uh, that that's lower on the list uh, yeah, a little bit for sure. Lower. But um, I think that the the Rangers game last night, you said that a lot of things did not go their way. Was that like underlying data stuff? Does that worry you for the rest of the series? Or what's your overall vibe on that series after last night's game? You know, I would certainly have, I have to dig into last night's data. I mean, they got out shot. You just look at the basic yeah. box scores. Uh, you know, I'll talk about a little bit of that when it comes to Panthers, Bruins, but you know, the calls weren't great on both sides, you know, it ends on a power play. A lot of people were upset with the last call. Um, but you know, it went the other way where the, the Canes had five or six power plays and they had one in each overtime and they just don't convert. So, yeah. you know, regardless of some of the underlying stuff, and a lot of people say that the Canes are a better team in a lot of areas, some of that doesn't matter at a certain point, you know, you know, like we've seen that before with, you know, the Dodgers losing in, in not making it in the playoffs, the Braves not making it in the playoffs. Like at a certain point, you just got to show up and get it done. And, you know, that's where we're at in the playoffs. And the Rangers did, in fact, get it done last night. So happy for you that that happened. And hopefully they will do well for the rest of the series. For today, we're going to talk about the NBA game for tonight. That is Pacers versus Knicks. We'll talk about the futures market again with all the walking is going down right now. And then we'll break down Brewers, Pan- Bruins, Panthers, Brewers, Bruins, Panthers, and Oilers, Canucks as well. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. As mentioned, we are back here once again tomorrow with Tom getting he has read on, I think, a four game or four games across the NBA and NHL for tonight, too. So, Tom, back with us for tomorrow to discuss that right here in the same podcast feed. To get that as it is posted, make sure you search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating and review as well. And of course, each episode of Covering the Spread is up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus as well. The NBA playoffs have tipped off, but it's not too late to get in on the action with FanDuel because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to use on same-game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and so much more. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager, only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Not available in North Carolina. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 
770 stop in Louisiana. Visit MD Gambling Health at Oregon, Maryland, 1 800 Gambler.net in West Virginia, 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit Gambling Helpline MA.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Now, Tom, we'll dig into Pacers Knicks tonight in just one second. But first, massive movement in the NBA future market, given that the Wolves, my Wolves, are up 2-0 in their series against the Nuggets, despite not having Rudy Gobert, uh, defensive player of the year in game number two. So things have moved a lot. Uh, the Celtics are now minus 115 to win it all. <laughs> which is absurd. Uh, you can actually bet the field at minus 110 against them as well. But when you look at the futures market, any value for you, Tom, now that things have been so shaken up? Uh, at this point, it's really, really limited. The only spot that you could look for the slightest bit of value, I think, would be Boston direct outcome to beat OKC. Okay. It, only if you think OKC is capable of beating Minnesota. That's what it comes down to. Because Boston, to, meet, to beat Minnesota is plus 280. I don't think there's value there. But if you think the Thunder have enough to get past Minnesota, which I think it's razor thin, like 51-49 on either side, really, that's the only spot I would go. I know a lot of people are probably going to say, okay, this is the time to buy in on the Nuggets, right? Oh, they, 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 we've never seen these odds before for the Nuggets. They're down 0-2. They could win two games because they're the Nuggets. I understand that just because you want to get these super long odds at 16-1. to you know. But realistically, I, I just don't see that happening. I, I don't see them winning – you know, four games in this series and then going through another series versus the Thunder who are extremely difficult. So at this point, I think, you know, the ship has kind of sailed in the NBA. I you don't go to the Celtics. You know, I, the best spot to look, I think, is maybe direct series outcomes where you're getting a four to two. You're just banking on that. That's probably where the most value lies going forward. Yeah, right now, the Celtics to beat the Thunder is plus 490 at FanDuel Sportsbook. As Tom mentioned, Celtics to beat the Wolves is plus 280. So not getting a ton of value there either. So right. it depends on how you handicap that Thunder versus Wolves matchup. If you think that the that the Thunder can emerge there, and like you're getting a decent, you know, you're getting a d discount. I will say though, that's taking into account the fact that Thunder a bit earlier on in their series, the Mavs, than the Wolves are in their series uh, with the Nuggets. So a bit more left to be decided. I will I say I have I have a Celtics direct outcome to beat the Nuggets. At five and a half to one, which I had from you know a couple months ago, not happy, not happy about that. It because happens. the Celtics are rolling, and they're just going to beat everyone apparently. Right, like, knock down twenty threes a game. This is what and you get though for underestimating the Wolves, Tom. Come apparently, on. come on, this is all on you. I have no pity for you in the situation. But Tom does consider the Celtics to beat the Thunder at plus four ninety. Let's break down Thursday night's game. It's, that is the Pacers taking on the Knicks for right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Knicks favored by four and a half. That is down from five and a half in game one and down from five earlier on this morning. Total for this game is at 219 and a half. In game one, pretty fun one. The Knicks got the win. Bit of controversy involved with that victory, though. So uh, spread is tightening. Any bets you like in game number two, Tom? I think naturally there's merit to taking the Pacers. There's merit to taking the under. I think those are more leans rather than anything. Uh, you know, just like like you said, the way game one ended, it was it was super close. And it was kind of back and forth. It already just moved to 219 and a half, I'm seeing. So I think there is merit to taking under. I think live betting unders is still going to be my favorite spot. If you see a, a touch of scoring early, it's at 223, 224, somewhere around there. Continue to take unders as the game goes on. We're just not going to see this much scoring on this consistent of a basis moving forward. So those are just general leans. My overall favorite spot in the game is going to be Pascal Siakam over 27 and a half points plus rebounds. And there's a lot to consider for this. Number one, the Knicks announced that Mitchell Robinson is out for six to eight weeks due to a re-injury, a re-aggravation of this ankle injury that he has. The Knicks have been running an extremely tight eight-man rotation with uh, Hartenstein as the starting center, Mitchell Robinson coming off the bench playing in the mid-teens or so in minutes, and then a very, very limited amount of minutes for Precious Achua coming off the bench as well. Now that uh, Mitchell Robinson is out, this means that they could – might need the the size simply from Jericho Sims in there because the Pacers have Miles Turner and possible Siakam out there. So when I'm looking at this game plan, Siakam is already generally at one or two when it comes to total field goal attempts. 
So if they're already limited on big men, getting the ball down low, exploiting the size advantage that they have and trying to pile up the fouls on Hartenstein and or Precious Achua is a path to victory for the Pacers. So when, you know, when we combine this all together, the injuries are a real factor for the Knicks in this series, and the Pacers have a chance to exploit that. Do you think that the injuries are part of why we've seen the spread tightening for game two between the Pacers and Knicks? It, it might be. Um, you know, also, I think people are just banking on some amount of regression from Jalen Brunson. You know, 37 and a half points is an insane line for a, a point prop for a player in the playoffs. So I, I think there's merit to taking the under just because you don't expect the player to put up a fifth straight 40 point game. I think that's what it would be tonight. Right. Fifth straight there. So there's merit to taking an under in theory, just because we're banking on regression, but if Brunson's going to regress and the injuries are a factor and the game was so close to begin with in game one, there's merit on the Pacers. There's merit on the unders. There's merit on, you know, everything swinging back in the other direction, essentially. So could see some regression here on Brunson, but uh, I'm good, man. Uh, I'll let someone else take that under for him yeah. at 37 and a half is a minus 113. But we do like Siakam over 27 and a half points plus rebounds. That is minus 106 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Well, let's shift over and talk some NBA for tonight or NHL for tonight, Tom. A couple of games. First one is Bruins versus Panthers. Right now, FanDuel Sports with Panthers minus 166 in the money line. Total here is five and a half over there is minus 105. Bruins kind of surprising. I thought how dominant they were in game one, given how tough their series was the Maple Leafs. But hey, they they showed up. Uh, but the Panthers favorites here for game two. What stands out to you in this one? So what stands out to me in this one is something I mentioned at the top, digging into some of the underlying stuff. You know, when you said, you know, Bruins coming off this long series, Panthers are the home team, they're the higher seed, they're the favorite, all these sorts of things. You know, the 5-1 uh, box score is a little bit shocking. If we dig into some of the stats, I think it's rather interesting. Game one, the Panthers had 3.4 expected goals. They end with one. The Bruins have had 3.16 expected goals. They obviously ended with five, the last one being an empty net. In terms of total shot attempts created, Panthers were at 86, the Bruins were at 53. That means, and the Panthers had 39 to 29 in actual shots on goal. And in terms of high danger scoring chances, the Panthers had 17 compared to the Bruins at 11. So the box score is rather, uh, you know, striking when you see five to one, you know, even if it's just four to one without the empty net goal, it's, it's still, uh, it jumps out at you. But when I'm looking at it, I'm saying, okay, the Panthers did a lot. They, did, they played like really well despite the outcome. They played really well. They did a lot of these little things right. So if that is going to be continuing, which is what they've been doing all season, just piling up the shots, constantly putting pressure on the opposing goalie, there's multiple paths to getting uh, value here. It would be A, potentially Jeremy Swayman save prop if he's in net for the Bruins, just because we know that the Panthers are continuing to pile up shots. And then it's going to be looking to Panthers players for shot attempts. I don't know who's going to be scoring, but we can find at least some consistency in terms of the total shot market that we're getting. So Vladimir Tarasenko for the Panthers, over one and a half shots, it's sitting at minus 148. You know, good game from him. I would say, again, good games from everyone on the Panthers. They just didn't get the results. He had no shots on goal, which isn't ideal, but he had two missed shots. He's playing a solid role. He's in power play time. So as long as he's taking the shot attempts, sure, some of them aren't going to hit the net at sometimes but I'll still take a player that's taking that high volume. And then Brandon Montour, their defender, over two and a half shots on goal, plus 100. He had four shots on goal, another two that missed uh, the net. So those don't get credit. And he's also on the first power play. So I want to buy into players that are at least doing the right thing, regardless of the results. That uh, Tarasenko number has shortened. It's now minus 154. Is that still value for you, Tom, over one and a half shots? One and a half is 148 minus 154. It's, I would say shop for the best line available. It's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's only one and a half. We got to mind, uh, remember that these are just 60 minute lines. Overtime. Would you consider alt overs for Tarasenko, like uh, to get three plus shots, or is that too ambitious again, given, like you said, it's just a 60 minute number here? Uh, it's just a 60 minute. I, I think that's a little too ambitious. The only player sure. would have interest for alt overs would be Carter Verhage. Okay. Um, just a, a better offensive player overall, plays a little bit of better role, higher volume shooter. That's the player I would look to because I think it's minus, was that say minus 160? Yeah. Yeah. So he's a player I would look to for four plus. That's realistically within his game to get that far. But Tarasenko, maybe not so much for him.
Okay, so Tarasenko getting a bit thin at one and a half, uh, minus 154. But the Montour number you mentioned, over two and a half shots, still minus 104 there. So still in line with what you were discussing. So it sounds like of the bets available, Montour probably the best route to buying into the Panthers' shot volume here. Right. Like I said, they played pretty well in game one, and I expect them to bounce back pretty cleanly in this game. And if they're going to be piling up the shots again, there's value on a Jeremy Swayman or Linus Allmark save prop who's ever in net for the Bruins. Okay, so buying into the Panthers, shot volume, whether it be via save props to the Bruins or potentially Brandon Montour over two and a half shots at minus 104. Other NHL game for tonight is the Oilers and the Canucks. And for game one, Oilers are minus 142 on the money line. Canucks are plus 118. We'll talk about game one specifically in a second, Tom. But I want to get your overall vibe on this series. Oilers, pretty heavy favorites to advance out of this series. So before we get game one underway, Tom, what's your read on Oilers versus Canucks? I think this line is accurate given the injury news that we have right now, and that is the Vancouver starting goalie, uh, Thatcher Demko, who got hurt. I think it was after game one or game two of the first series versus Nashville. He's going to be out for the next few games, and he was very, very strong this year. They brought in Casey the Smith after him, started a few games. They then brought in a third goalie, which is something that we very rarely see at at all in the playoffs, Arthur Silovs for the Canucks, who has seen extremely limited playing time last year. And this year, we're talking just a handful of games. And he allowed just five goals over the first three games. So given the nature that they're down to a second slash third string goalie, it is accurate that the Oilers are as heavy of a favorite as they are. If Demko were to be healthy and he can get back for game four and they can, the series, you know, would be within one game, that's where the Canucks would have value. But at this point, we can't make that determination when their starting goalie hasn't played in a week or whatever it is. So it sounds like if you like the Canucks, maybe hold off until the goalie situation crystallizes before yes. you buy into them. Yeah, it, it's just it with McDavid on the other side and how they've been operating, granted a little bit better on defense than I antis- initially anticipated. We just can't look at value with the Canucks right now. Okay, so let's look at game one specifically, where the goalie situation is obviously still not ideal, which is potentially why this total is so high. Six and a half goals. The total right now, plus 106 on the over. Again, Oilers, minus 142 on the money line. Anything you like for game one specifically, Tom? It would be keeping things super simple with a shot prop for Leon Dreisaitl for the Edmonton Oilers. Over two and a half shots on goal, sitting at minus 128. He led the team in the first round with 23 on the second forward line, the first power play. I am under the assumption, or at least I would like to be of the belief that, you know, the Oilers recognize where the Canucks are as a team with this goaltending situation. And that means trying to make him uncomfortable, forcing him to do more than he's ever done in a high pressure situation, the playoffs and the lines moving already forcing, forcing him to make 40 saves essentially. Right. Like it, it, they can't just go through this game and say, yeah, we're just going to kind of grind it out if we can get a couple shots on that here. No, no, they need to take 40 shots and force him to play at the level that he played, which was, again, maybe above his head in the first round against the Predators, where he had five goals in three games, which is remarkable. So, you know, make him uncomfortable, operate rationally, and just pile up the shots. And, you know, McDavid didn't have a whole ton of goals in uh, the first round against the Kings. He only had one. I think there's a smidge of value on his goal prop. Is at plus 135. If you can find it at plus 145, that would be a bit more ideal. Also, live betting goal props. As the game goes on, the numbers get longer. I think that's also a little bit of value for McDavid. Now, you mentioned the dry saddle number uh, did lengthen or did shorten to minus 130 over two and a half shots. Still value for you there? Yeah. Minus 128 to minus 130. I'll roll with that. I wouldn't go past minus 140, though. Okay, so still value in the dry sidle shot prop over two and a half shots, minus 130. That is for Oilers versus Canucks in game number one. That's all that we have here for today on covering the spread. But if you want more Tom, don't worry. We're back once again tomorrow. Talking with Tom once again about that night's NBA and NHL games as well. Find that right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Tom, appreciate the time as always. Uh, Good luck to you trying to come off of a fun night last night. Hopefully we can run it back with some more fun tonight as well. Absolutely. Another set of games tomorrow. I'll be ready to go. All righty. Find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets in the NBA, NHL, and MLB for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for some more playoff action. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>